Welcome everyone uh, to this uh, most interesting presentation by um, uh, members of the uh, Masters in uh, Financial Engineering uh, class. Um, and what we're going to address today, uh, discuss a topic of, uh, it's a project called uh, the Falling Knife Project. Uh, this is a project that is done in coordination with Synaptic Consulting. Um, and uh, what we are looking to do here is uh, put together an algorithm. Now this, this project was also done in coordination with the uh, uh, computer science slash business uh, program as well. Uh, Ank, who happens to be there, is the, uh, the director of the program. Uh, so this is the MFE presentation uh, about falling knife and essentially what we're looking for kind of simple in its idea is to identify those stocks that uh, will be falling on your head and making you lose lots of money. Um, but uh, seriously, uh, this will enable the students to develop a, an algorithm on one end and at the end, uh, at some point, um, an open-ended uh, uh, application uh, more. <coughs> anyway, let us start with, uh, so we've got uh, Ramesh Wu, we've got uh, who is in, uh, in the US, Aman, who is actually uh, joining us uh, from India, uh, Kabuki, and uh, Jonathan also on campus, uh, Lehigh University in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So, Ramesh, go. Yeah, so, uh, Kai, can you share the screen? So, uh, just like Professor Zoro uh, introduced uh, for the um, for our Quant project, The Falling Knife, uh, this project is actually combined with the CSB team uh, at Lehigh and also the MFB team uh, from the Lehigh Grad School. Next slide, please. So um, as we briefly talk about um, the summary of the falling knife is basically the, the two joint uh, initiative by, so we have two teams at Lehigh and then also joined by uh, the synaptic company at down at Allentown. Um, we, so basically MFE, we uh, mainly take in charge of the financial strategy and also the algorithm and the CSB team is more focused on the infrastructure and also the web development. Our objective is actually to trying to identify what is a falling knife and how does it affect um, stock traders and, um, and then how can we actually use our flexible uh, web app to actually identify what is a falling knife and how we can use it as an uh, algorithm to see if we can um, manipulate the data and to see if uh, we can do anything with the custom and analytics and to predict what is going to happen in the future. So uh, a couple of things that came up at the beginning um, of this project when we first started is how should the both teams proceed this problem? Because uh, the MFE team is mainly in um, the machine learning side and also the finance side, uh, but the CSB team is more focused on development. So how do both teams, uh, what do both teams need to do to communicate with each other? And what do we need to do to actually make this thing happen? And then the second big, big question is that we, um, that we have encountered is what is a falling knife? For a lot of different traders, falling knife is that the stock go into a really big downtrend and never come back up. And there's a really famous saying in the stock trading world is that don't catch a falling knife. So we're actually trying, so the two teams uh, coming together, we're trying to figure out what is a falling knife and why and how we can avoid to not catch it. And then the, the third thing is that what role do CSB and an MFE team play in this project? Um, as I said before, the two teams actually have a different uh, skill set. So 
um, it is very important for the two teams to actually communicate with each other. And um, since we have actually met a lot of issues of um, effectively communicating and also sharing information, but um, later on, we did actually did a really good job and pushed forward to an, in our timeline. And then the, the fourth thing is that, what is the timeline of, of this project? Some of them, uh, so there's a lot to do in this project. For example, we need to create our database, we need to uh, have our information, and we need to identify our falling knives. So um, to create a timeline, it's actually very important, and that will be uh, explained later on in the presentation. Um, so right now, I'm going to talk about uh, what we have first did uh, in the MFE team uh, is to actually identify a falling knife. And through multiple conversations with the, uh, the MFE teams, um, we actually came out, we actually came up with the, the short term identifier of, for the falling knife. And as you can see in the red lines of um, this uh, uh, stock chart, there's, it's actually uh, different levels of support and resistance. And as people who trade stock understand that support and resistance is the key level of uh, how a stock is moving, whether it's going up or going down, or it's trend. So um, we're actually using technical analysis to identify the short-term falling knife, whether it's happening or not. So uh, as you can see, draw in the circle, the falling knife actually starts at when it almost reached the highest, uh, it reached the high, the highest price 69 and 44 and then dropped as low as through 36, 64. That's almost a 50% drop for a stock. And then that's something that we're trying to avoid. And as you can see, uh, I've drew four different key levels of support and resistance and it actually broke all four of them. So um, there's other, uh, identifiers that we're going to talk about later on to how we support this idea to identify what is a falling knife. So um, through multiple conversations, we talk about the one of the most important identifier is our moving average. Uh, we try to use uh, exponential moving average uh, and also simple moving average and different other moving average out there. And we actually found out that the exponential moving average is one of the most important thing. So that's the thing that we're trying to throw out there. Uh, because exponential moving average actually um, focus on what happened uh, latest day instead of uh, what happened like three weeks ago. So we're going to use that to one of our identifiers. The second thing is uh, we're going to use MACD. So MACD is one of the very important, um, is one of very important identifier for uh, stock traders, especially for day traders. So MACD actually shows us a short term trend uh, from uh, 12 days and 26 days, how the stock is moving, which direction is going. So we're gonna, so the MFE team decided to manipulate um, the stock with um, the, the MACD, seeing where it has dropped the lowest and when it stopped dropping. And this that counts as our second trend identifier. So the uh, one of the most important things is the RSI, and that comes in with our third identifier. So RSI it's uh, it's an index that show that shows um, the buy the buy and sell ratio of a stock. And we all know that a uh, falling knife mainly happened because there's a huge sell off. So we're also uh, monitoring the RSI index um, point and see where the um, see where the falling knife starts. Um, so this is one of the uh, one of the memo that we sent it to the CSB team uh, explaining how we want them to calculate and also to build a database with around RSI, MACD, and also um, the simple moving average and uh, later on it became to uh, exponential moving average EMA instead of SMA and uh, on the right side when we write the analysis we talk about the idea of how we're actually going to use all the identifiers to find the falling knife uh, for example 
we're going to um, um, have a different constraint of RSI being 40, being 60, being 50, and also um, by using whether whether the, the stock price is 5% uh, below or 10% below the normal uh, exponential moving average, and also what should the MACD be? Should it be negative 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7? So um, the CSB team actually has created the database and also allowed the MFE team to actually just input one point, for example, RSI 50, and to find all the historical uh, stocks that actually fit that category. And uh, our idea is that when the RSI, MAC, MACD, and also the EMA, the, when all three actually hit the point um, of what we want it to be, and it would actually send out our, well, it would send out an alert saying that this is a falling knife and don't trade it. So this is the, the short-term part, um, since the short-term falling knife since the um, we're using technical analysis. And then later on, we're going to talk about uh, what does a long-term look like and also how the predictive model can be played in this part. Thank you. So the next thing to consider is how we're actually going to do this. So what's the platform that we will build that will enable the analysis that Ramos was talking about? What will we make it possible? Uh, so the, start from the left side. The first is how will the user interact with it? And that will be through a web app. Uh, we will also build a front end, uh, uh, maybe through JSON, maybe through something else. All of the technologies um, are here just for, um, as an example, we, everything is up in the air. Every, not, nothing is done until it's done. So we'll use the technologies that are, that are most suited. But just for the, the architecture from a structural point of view, uh, the user interacts through a UI to um, the whole thing will be head on a web service, most likely Google Cloud, and where not only uh, where data will be stored, but also where all the processing will happen, where all the algorithms will be happening. Um, and the, th the third thing is that our database will be, again, hosted in the cloud in a, in a format that uh, the CSB team will decide. Um, the, the most important thing when it comes to the database is the sources of data and how we will structure that, how we will um, actually extract that ETL, extract transformation and load it into our database. That takes me to the next slide. Yeah, and again, before we start here, uh, you'll see a couple of things like Kafka, Google Cloud, and so on. These are all just examples as we um, mentally chase you know, the ideal conception of how this will be. The the first thing to start with is words. So this is a data the database uh, which we use right now to to get almost all the data that we use. It includes all the stock information that we need, which um, which we've been very thoughtful about. The idea is that we shouldn't need to use a lot of data. We try actively to use as little data as, pos as we possibly need because we know how difficult it is to find it, find quality data, actually clean it, and that to, to do it all in an automated way. And so the, the flat files, from, from Wharton we get flat files which we manually upload into uh, a cloud storage. Um, and that's what we do right now. In the future we hope that uh, we can also extract, maybe if we can hit an API through Edgar to RSS fields and also to the wires, the business wires, so we can get um, up, to, up to the minute or up to the second information on stocks. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get into a bit more of the, the issues we face with that later. Uh, if, we man if we're successful, we probably do that um, by streaming the data. So it will be up to the second, up to the minute, depending on our refresh rate is. All of this will be centralized uh, in a server for cloud storage, um, which, the, which we leave entirely up to the CSP. We have no interaction with that. And finally, the, the consumption. The, um, as far as the user is concerned, he will see two things. The first is the dashboard, which will show him all the stocks that meet our criteria, and it'll also have an intuitive user interface for him to modify certain criteria. So not just um, selections, but also changing the, um, some of the most fundamental things that the whole um, calculation is sort of based on. So it's, the system is built to be not only extremely scalable, but also extremely flexible in terms of the analysis that we can do. The idea with that is, as Ramos uh, mentioned briefly, is that the different indicators can be hit at different levels. And for each individual user, 
to have his own trading pattern, he might have to personalize the the the, the alerts that he gets, the the thresholds, the support levels, and so on. So you'll have that dashboard to do all that in, and you'll also get reports. Those reports can come to him on a desktop or mobile for an email or a text. Uh, all of that we can we we will we'll end up building out later. Uh, the, the third thing is that um, we also want to make it possible for our our data and our analysis to be exported in an automated way through an API into third-party applications. So if the user is using something else, say he's using uh, maybe TD Ameritrade or using some other application, he shouldn't have to keep switching back and forth. Those recommendations should transfer immediately. So he opens one app, and that's where all his all the information to see for that day is. If we go to the next slide. So Ramos brought up the the algorithms that we will use for this project, but this is not the only way we can solve the question of when to catch a falling knife. The, the core of this project is simply to, to, to answer one question, that is when to catch a falling knife. So the first way that we did it was using the RSI and all the indicators was the short-term trading way. And there's obviously the, the other way is the long-term investment way, with the fundamental analysis, comparative valuations, and so on. And of course, immediately when you look into that, you've got just 101 indicators. You have all sorts of stuff, you know, ownership of percentages, geographic exposures, all the ratios from the balance sheet income statement. Uh, the trouble with this method is not that it's difficult to tell what the connection is. We can always use an untrained machine learning to tell us to look at all this data, crunch all this data, crunch all the stock prices, and tell us what the impact is, what are the relationships to across the equations. The trouble is that to have all the data that we need to do that, we would have to embark on a huge data scraping mission. And that would involve scraping multiple sources. It would, it would be SEC filings, it would be the wires, it would be um, earnings calls, it would be all sorts of sources that are not at all uniform, not at all standardized. And so it's not just would the data scraping be a huge issue, but also modifying that data and making it into a structured format is was something that we didn't think that we would be successful in embarking. And now I, I pass on to Kabuki. Hi, uh, thank you, Ramos and Armin, for presenting the work uh, that the team has done in the first phase. And now uh, I'm going to talk about the predictive algorithm that the team will focus on in the next phase. Uh, in addition to identification of falling knives, um, investors could also be interested in, uh, like, uh, in like whether the falling knives will recover or uh, keep, keep falling in the future. So we're trying to build a predictive algorithm to help them make decisions. Uh, this is the statistical model that our algorithm will be based on. On the uh, left side of the function, we have the outcome variable y, and we also have a series of uh, explanatory variables um, on the left side. Mm, so next, I'm going to explain these variables in the following slides. Uh, there are only two categories for the outcome variable. Uh, the falling knife recovers and the falling knife does not recover. Uh, so we define the problem as a classification problem. The outcome variable y is a binary variable here, uh, one or zero. Uh, it's one if the falling knife recovers. It's zero if the falling knife does not recover. As for the uh, explanatory variables, uh, they are the factors uh, that could affect the recovery of falling knives. So this is the statistical model uh, that our algorithm uh, will be based on. Uh, when it comes to classification, uh, there are three uh, classic um, machine learning algorithms, logistic regression, decision trees, and support vector machine. Uh, we considered all of them and decided to use SVM to group the falling knives. 
Um, and next, I'm gonna compare uh, the three methods and show why we choose a support vector machine over the other two. Logistic regression uh, works only toward linear classification problems. However, uh, our problem here is more likely to be a nonlinear. Uh, also, it does not handle a large number of categorical variables, uh, which we will have many in, in our model. And this is why we rule out uh, this candidate method. Decision trees, uh, this method uh, needs constraints for each variable, and it has to take into account uh, variable interactions, which means it, it requires a lot of work uh, because in our model we have uh, many variables and our problem is a high dimensional problem. That's why uh, we don't think uh, it's a good choice. So uh, why we use SVM? Um, the reason is that uh, it handles nonlinear classification problems and it works well with categorical variables. Um, the three methods I have just mentioned all have pros and cons. Uh, SVM is just more suitable for uh, our particular problem. At the end of the day, uh, we need to train the model. Uh, there are uh, some uh, user-friendly softwares uh, that allow you to build your own model uh, using classic, classic algorithms like SVM without programming. So uh, we're going to use those softwares like IBM SVS um, modeler uh, for our problem. But if they don't work out for uh, the specific problem, that will consider programming. Before training the model, uh, we should um, identify factors uh, that affect the uh, recovery of the falling knives. And we should also build the whole data set. Uh, Jonathan uh, is gonna show uh, the factor identif identification part. Thank you. Okay, um, so after we select the proper model to use, um, the question is how we identify the factors which are the X variables in our model. Um, so when the falling knife happened, and as we can see, there's a sharp drop of the company stock prices. And then if the company succeeds to recover, as the investor, the first thing we, we, may we may want to know is what are the factors which contribute the most to this result? So um, there is uh, ample information investors can access from the market every day, ranging from like gro global market data and macroeconomic factors to the sector level metrics and uh, individual stock prices and ratios. So most of, most of this data are quantitative data which can be put in our model and analyzed. But some information like whether, whether a certain incident happened is difficult to quantify. Therefore, we define this, uh, the factors into two categories, which are uh, binary variables and continuous variables. Um, next slide, please. So the first one is binary variables. We use the binary variables to denote the occurrence of any significant event. It is one if the event happened and zero otherwise. So there are like tons of events from different um, sectors from different areas. So we basically divide this incident into four main aspects. The first one is the financial aspect. And if there is a merger and acquisition for the target company, if there is a liquidity crisis in the market, or if there is a strategic investing um, from the, the company that we are interested in. And the second one is the political aspect. If there is a government policy change like um, if, if the environmental policies change, there will be some impact on the, uh, on the chemical companies like Dupont, like Dow, or if there's um, presidential elections for the every four years, and this will have different impacts on 
different companies in different sectors. The third one is the social aspect, like the pandemic, the COVID-19 is happening. Like if there is a disaster happening someplace, like tornado or earthquake, how will this kind of um, unexpected disasters have the impact on the companies that we are interested? Or if there is a global event, there's some meetings from the national unions, there's um, like the trade war between, the China, between China and the United States. So these are the social aspects that we are uh, really care about. The last one is um, the technological aspect. So this is some new tech, technology inventions like, um, like, the, like the 5G, how the 5G affect the, um, the telecom giants like Verizon and tele, uh, Verizon and AT&T or what will be the impact of autonomous driving um, on the traditional car manufacturers like Ford. So these are the, um, the incidents that very significant but hard to quantify. So we're using the binary variables of zero and one to um, put them into the model. Um, the next one is the continuous variables. So we are looking at these continuous variables in two levels. The first one is a macro level and the second one is a company level. Um, the, the first one, uh, the first part in the macro level is the leading indicators. So these are the indicators that um, serving as a heads up and the investor can use them to anticipate the future economic trends. Um, like the PMI, Manufacturing and Services Index, and we can track if the, if the person, person manager um, stopped to purchase the raw materials and if the company, if, if the company is still uh, producing their products. So we can see from here um, to anticipate if the future economic is healthy. The second one is Housing Market Index, uh, which is basically the housing value and sales. Um, we can see from here um, the supply and demand in the whole housing market to anticipate if there is a housing bubble in the future. The last one is the level of new business startups. So new uh, lots of new business startups can provide more job opportunities and in the long term this will have a healthy, um, healthy influence on the whole economy and the growth can be expected. The second part is uh, the co coincidence indicators like federal funds rate and GDP. So the, sec um, the second part is uh, company level. We're using the fundamental analysis and technical analysis to um, define the factors. The first one is from the fundamental perspective, like earnings per share, like net profit margin, like return on equity, like P ratio and dividend payout ratio. So these are the fundamental like financial ratios that uh, we can see the company's um, profitability. And the other is technical perspective, like trading, trading volume, the MACD, and the uh, RSI. So these are the uh, typical ratios that uh, the traders are using in the short term investing. So, so these are the two uh, main part of our variables, uh, X variables in our model which are the binary variable, variables and continuous variables. So the last, last part is our project schedule. Um, I believe we now have finished um, the design and data acquisition. We have collected the data of uh, S&P 500 companies over the past 30 years. And we are now working on the algorithm development. And uh, after we have done this part, uh, we can do the backend uh, development and uh, algorithm refinement and then at last we can do the front end, front end development and testing. So thank you for listening. Professor, you're muted. You're muted, Professor. Sorry. Uh, let's, uh, so that's good. Um, Let's uh, see how we do uh, in the fall when we come back and continue that uh, project, important project uh, with this class of uh, 2020 and, uh, and through the summer as well. Thank you all very much. Thank you.